Good morning, ladies. It's Tamika TTC. I haven't introduced myself in a while. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Welcome to the lateness. <laughs> if you're not new to this channel, welcome back. Okay, sorry about that. Holder fell off. Okay. So, like I was saying, good morning, ladies. Um, if you're not new to the channel, welcome back. Um, I don't know what I talked about in my last video. I didn't get a chance to review it before um, this video. I'm on my way to acupuncture. Um, I can't remember, but I think I mentioned that uh, my acupuncturist is moving or has moved um, to a whole new state. So this is my first treatment with my official new acupuncturist. Um, there are actually two ladies that have replaced um, my acupuncturist uh, in a school zone. <laughs> there are actually two ladies that have replaced her. I've met both of them um, because they would sub uh, for my acupuncturist when she couldn't be there. So, they're not completely new to me, but they're not my acupuncturist. So, um, if I did mention this before in a previous video, I probably mentioned that I almost had a nervous breakdown when I found out that my acupuncturist wasn't going to be with me anymore. I mean, she's been with me for over, over two years since before my February surgery. And, um, you know, I just feel bad because, um, just like you know she had become part of my village as simply Tanika would say um and it hurts that as somebody who was a cheerleader for me in this process as I am coming up on my one year mark in TTC this month <laughs> um it's a shame because she won't be there when I get pregnant I mean I'll still have contact with her um so she'll be notified and all that great stuff but she won't officially be my acupuncturist um at the time that I get pregnant so that makes me sad um in the way that my sister can't be here and I'm probably talking about my sister a lot because today is um May tomorrow is my sister's birthday so she is heavy on my heart heavy on my mind um lately um you know i recently visited her grave um and i'm just she is just everywhere um with me right now and uh so i'm kind of sort of emotional um you know but just thinking about her and memories and whatnot. So, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, um, not a whole lot has been going on. Um, I feel like I haven't really been uh, school bus. I'm so late. I'm already like almost 10 minutes late. Um, I feel like... Uh, You know, not a whole lot's been going on. I've just been working on my weight, you know. Um, and that's been going. That's all I can say is that it's been going. Um, as of right now, I don't know if you follow me on social media. You know, Monday was a good day for me. Um, because when I came back from New York... I don't know if I've talked to you since I've been back from New York. Okay, so just in case I aren't, I might have to record some, some more stuff. But anyway, um, since I've been back from New York, um, you know, I had a lot of water retention. It's extremely hard to keep to the diet while I was there in New York. So, um, I didn't. Just going to be real, I didn't. Um, I tried, but, um, you know, I didn't eat a whole lot or anything. I didn't go crazy, but I didn't didn't keep to the diet so 
<laughs> um, I have been keeping it keto since I've been back. Um, I got back on Friday. Today's Wednesday. Um, and so far, so good. I mean, I weighed in that Saturday morning at like 248.8, but I knew a lot of that was water retention. I always retain so much water after I fly. Um, <clears throat> and it takes a couple of days to get that water off me. Um, but then probably, I guess from maybe like the salt um, and just my body trying to basically transitioning back and forth between ketosis and non-ketosis. So, um, but within two days, you know, that weight had come down to, um, on Monday morning. So Saturday morning I was 248.8, but Monday morning I was 242.4. <laughs> so not exactly my lowest, um, less than a half pound, um, from my actual lowest reported weight. Um, but been 242.4 since Monday um, haven't been able to shake it I mean I get on the treadmill I do lose that pound so that's just my weight before the treadmill I don't like to count the weight after I exercise I like to count the weight from that morning when I wake up before I eat or drink anything so that kind of sucks you know but um, I'm not gonna let it uh, deter me um, Sometimes the body just holds on because I did lose that five pounds, uh, five and a half pounds pretty quickly. So my body might be just trying to hold on. Um, like maybe I'm like malnutrition or something, but I'm far from malnutrition. I had like three keto cheeseburgers <laughs> last uh, yesterday. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I had a cheeseburger. It was so good. I make them so good. And then all beef, and I don't digest beef that well either. So. I gotta change my meats up. I'm eating way too much beef, and I'm sure that's contributed to the scale not moving. But the good news is um, that I'm eating three meals a day, and the scale is not moving. So it's, I'm not getting heavier, um, but I do believe I'm getting lighter. Like I can see, um, you know, more muscle tone in my arms, in my legs. My stomach is going down, all that great stuff. Um, but thanks to birth control, I actually have boobs now. <laughs> They're sore all the time, but I have boobs now thanks to birth control. Thank you, birth control. <sighs> I see the doctor in exactly two weeks. Yeah, so today's the 9th. I see him on the 23rd. So I have two weeks. I'm still keeping the keto. I know the scale hasn't moved, but I think when it moves, it's gonna move a lot. So, um, I'm not counting myself out as far as um, hitting my goal for the next time I see him. So, keto does appear to be working, but I'm, I've sort of hit a plateau. I think that's my body fighting. Me losing this weight is fighting. So, I just have to keep doing what I'm doing. Eventually, my body will um, give up and say, okay, you win. Let's drop the weight. So, um, you know, hopefully that'll be what happens. Um, I don't know which doctor I'm going to see today. Uh, if it's going to be Dr. Jen or if it's going to be um, the other lady. I can't remember her name for some strange reason. I really do like Dr. Jen. She's the one who's suggested the healing tones to me some time ago um, to help try to heal <laughs> my tubes, kind of get my brain to kind of work with everything else in my body. As a matter of fact, I woke up like 2 o'clock in the morning and I just could not get back to sleep. I just could not. I tossed and turned for almost an hour. Um, and uh, I eventually had to turn on some healing tones for relaxation and stress relief. Um, and then eventually I fell asleep. I don't know how long it took me, but um, I think eventually I got to sleep. And I woke up very calm, cool, collected <laughs> this morning. Um, but yeah, I'm still trying to figure out this keto thing. I don't know what I ate yesterday. I don't know if it's because 
I ate late. Um, not yesterday, the day before, um, because I ate late in the evening. That yesterday morning, my sugar's like shot up to like 150, and I, I didn't have any carbs. I mean, I did have some short ribs, um, some beef short ribs that uh, were marin. What is going on? That were marinated. So, um, I don't know if that marinade kind of just created the extra sugars. <sighs> I really don't know. So, I don't know. I guess I just have to be careful about um, eating late, for one, um, and marinades for two. And I know that marinade that I'm referring to only have one carb, um, and I didn't add any extra marinade. So, I really don't know what, what went wrong. Um, there, but I do think, um, you know, Dr. Smith, my previous acupuncturist, said that this, this phenomenon where you, um, kind of, your sugars go up at night for some reason, and I think maybe I have that, and it just, just went up for no reason. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, let me run in here, and, um, I'll see you guys when I get back. All right. hairdresser for like 10 12 years and and this is why I was in Philly and then she moved to Florida um and it's just like oh my god well who's gonna do my hair now <laughs> so I guess it's kind of like that but it's not like I was gonna stop getting my hair done just because she couldn't do it anymore it just means I had to find somebody else to do it I don't understand those people but anyway, um, I literally have six minutes before my next meeting. Hopefully I can get home in that amount of time. I still haven't eaten breakfast. Uh, but Dr. Jen gave me an injection. It's supposed to help burn fat. I know I mentioned before these injections, I feel like I'm cheating. Because they're supposed to burn fat and stuff. But... Let me just say this. I know you guys are like all on board for me finding another doctor. My acupuncturist, Dr. Smith, was all on board about me finding another RV. Um, Dr. Jen is like all on board about me finding another RE. Not so much because, not so much somebody who will, um, you know, do IVF at my current rate. Wait. It's not so much about that, but at least somebody who would acknowledge all the hard work that I'm putting in. So, there. I don't know. I just, um, 
you know, when it comes to my weight and this IVF thing, I have a personal goal to get below, get my BMI below 40. That's a personal goal, as well as the doctor's guideline, even though he doesn't really want to do it, like at that weight, he is willing to. But, um, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Uh, it's just even more stressful for me to find someone else. Could I go see someone else? You know, the location would be a lot less convenient. Um, I'd basically be starting over. I'd have to go through the rigmarole of having my information, you know, from this doctor and then having to say, okay, I'm just going to take my business elsewhere. That's all incredibly stressful to me. Just thinking about it is incredibly stressful. Um, I feel like I'm close, so close that changing now just adds more stress and it doesn't change my situation. I still have to lose the eight pounds. You know? So, I don't know. I just... I know I've been crying a lot lately, but it's not just this process. It's not just my weight. It's a lot of stress, work stress, life stress, uh, weight loss stress, as well as TTC stress. And I just have to uh, vent. <laughs> and sometimes venting means crying. Um, and it's not just, it's not sad crying, sometimes it's angry crying. <sighs> I just feel like I try, I try, I try, I try, I try. And it's all so against me. That's the problem. I feel like it's all so against me. And what I need to do is stop feeling like the whole world is against me. Because that's what I feel. I feel like the whole world is just against me. So, time is never on my side. Uh, the universe is never on my side. You know, that's like how I feel when things don't go my way. But I will say this, um, considering everything that's going on, the amount of stress that I've been under these last few weeks, all of the travel, I have to travel again next week. I'll be traveling to Philly for my godson's birthday two weeks after that. So, like, my traveling just hasn't stopped and it's just really not been a good time right and um, I've been telling people you know God gives you what you need not what you want and the same here you know maybe it was God's plan for me to not have lost that weight because had I lost that weight I would have been trying to do a retrieve up and I would have been trying to fit it in as best I could um, with all this madness and the reality is, I probably would not have, most likely would not have had a good outcome with the amount of stress, with the travel, with the conference, the presentation, and just overall general work stress. I probably would not have uh, fared well in that process with all of that stress. It would have not, would not have been a good outcome. So... I'm in a better place now that I'm on the other side of most of it. Um, and at least the travel next week is just travel, but I'm not in all day meetings. You know, I'm just, the meetings are just a couple of hours, uh, a couple of days. And then I can like focus on my regular work, you know? So, um, yeah. That's that. I'll just be in Chicago doing it. <sighs> but, um, I'm feeling good. I don't know what was in that shot, but I'm feeling really good right now. Um, some of that could have been the relaxation healing tones that I played to get back to sleep early this morning. Some of it could have been, okay, it's time for me to go to this meeting. Some of it could have been, uh, you know, the walk on a treadmill. <laughs> but uh I don't know I'm doing a really bad thing right now <laughs> I'm trying to get 
getting my phone here. Uh, what's going on? I'm like literally two seconds from home. Anyway, um, that's all I have, ladies. Just to say I had a good session at acupuncture. Um, I love Dr. Jen. I still miss Dr. Smith. I know I've been saying this over and over and over. That's probably what I want to title this video. I love Dr. Smith. I miss Dr. Smith. And I love Dr. Jen. <laughs> anyway. Um, que sera, sera. So I am going to get to my meeting. Um, and I will talk to you ladies later. Sticky baby dust to all those TTC. Bye-bye. Oh, oh, you know what? Um, Mother's Day is this weekend. And even though this is going to air like weeks late, happy Mother's Day. Whether you're a mother, a soon-to-be mother, a fur baby mother like me, <laughs> a soon-to-be mother like me, um, happy Mother's Day. And um, Or whether you're a mother of a loss, you're still a mother. Um, whether your baby is here or not, you are still a mom. So, happy Mother's Day to you all and I'm gonna get my meal <laughs> and I'm gonna talk to you later. Bye.